Hello everybody, it is Friday, so it's time for another Tax Fridays. And this time we're going to do a deep dive on variables. I, this is actually inspired by a question I got from you. You, you asked me, is it possible for a variable to refer another variable? I said, hey, I, I have done one video on variables. It was the one that just came out, so it is time for an update video. And we're going to go deep. I'm going to tell you what you can and cannot do with variables. So, first of all, the syntax for variable is uh, you declare the variable using var and then you can have, I don't know if there's a limit of variables actually, I haven't read anything on the documentation that says it is, uh, but you declare the variables that you need and then you write return and then you um, write the expression that you want to use with those variables. Okay, so obviously <laughs> we're going to practice on that, don't worry. So this is the most typical case on how to use variables. I have here, this is the Northwind dataset, the one that we always use completely free, link down below. You will get this file in case you want to practice, okay? So um, here we have uh, the sales for the Northwind company, which is um, a little bit more complicated than sum of sales because it is in a special format, but it's just basically sales, sum of sales. And then we have um, same period last year isolated. So instead of accumulating, it's just giving us the values. We have accumulated up here. And then we have year over year. And as you can see, that's it's been calculated using three measures. And you can instead use variables if you want to create year over year. And uh, Here's the thing, let's, let's do that. We are going to create exactly the same year over year, uh, but using variables and we will go through the do's and don'ts. Uh, let's begin with new measure and year over year with variables. Okay, are you ready? First of all, to declare a variable, you write var in the beginning and then you have to give your variable a name. What names are allowed? So. Watch this. Sales previous. You see that it's complaining? It means that the variable name can only be one word. So if you do just sales equal, it doesn't complain. Another thing, there are some names that are reserved for variables that you cannot use. For example, if I write sum, do you see that it is also complaining, giving us an error? Or if I write count, and then you may think, oh, it is all the functions names that you cannot use. Mm -mm. Check this out. Cross folder. So you can use that. So I have no idea and I haven't seen it in the documentation which ones are reserved. But on the other hand, it's going to tell you. So when you start writing, if you start seeing red stuff showing up, it means that that's not allowed. Another thing that is not allowed, let me show you, is using numbers on the name of a variable. You won't allow it, so just don't. If you want to write a number, just write it, okay? Just write 10 instead of one zero, and then it would work. So that is for um, variable names. Same period last year, sales. That's the name that we're going to give to our first variable. So. This is going to calculate the sales um, for the same period last year, as I mentioned it. And um, let me see, uh, we already have a measure for that. And here is where it gets tricky for me, because if you're not going to use these, that measure anywhere else, but just to calculate the year over year, for sure, you just put it in here and then you're done. So you go calculate sales, uh, same period last year, calendar date. There are a thousand ways to calculate this, this is one of them. And you're done, okay? Now, we do have a sales uh, function. And here's what I'm not really sure because you can obviously write a new variable here that says 
current sales and then you write sum of sales or whatever it is to do to calculate sum of sales uh, and declare it again so obviously you need to have a measure specific for that for the calculations but you can also specify it here so there's nothing that says here that you shouldn't write it again um, a variable can reference a measure so i can write here like that so i'm saying the current sales is the measure called sales and you can write a comment that says this is the measure that calculates current sales write comments it helps a lot a lot so how will the performance will be better if we declare it here even if we have to have it explicit in the in the model so declare it twice here's the thing variables gets calculated and stored so if there are no changes it won't recalculate so it would be definitely an improvement performance but when is measure static that's my question i mean you're always filtering by year or by product or by category or by so in my head you will have to recalculate all the time so it wouldn't make any difference so the only reason why you should specify it here is to be extra clear as to how you're calculating year over year and in that case i will reference the measure instead of writing it again is there any performance improvements of that? I don't know. If you know, let me know. Um, but more often than not, I just don't bother about it. So I just don't specify whatsoever, only in the results. So now we have our variable that is year over year, and we're going to do our calculation. So you write return, shift enter, and then we're going to divide sales that's where our current sales come in minus now you declare you specify your variable same period last year sales divided by same period last year sales and there we have our year over year calculation okay so now you've seen how to declare you know how a variable you know how to name variables how to write variables and you know so, so they work we've seen the variables can refer to measures and the question i've got is can a variable refer another variable so let's say that we want to have a variable that does 10 percent of same same period last year just just for the purpose of this <laughs> it makes no sense to do that but just bear with me so remember 10 was not possible so we say 10 10 percent same period last year sales which is same period last year sales times 10 percent and you can actually declare a variable and don't use it why would you do that don't <laughs> but you can you're not going to get an error and you can a variable can refer to another variable as you can see it works beautifully it's absolutely no problem so in case you are you not know, using like measures that refers to measures then you can do variables that refer to variables and it will work beautifully where else where else um yeah we have um just to make sure um listen to this this says columns in table variables cannot be referenced via table name column name syntax but what <laughs> okay yeah here's the thing variables can store numbers you know so the result of same period last year sales is a number it's like three million two hundred thousand whatever it is fine but variables can also store tables i don't know if you knew that but it's possible let me show you um, we're going to create a new table and i'm doing it here so you can actually see the results right so we want to calculate how many customers have more order more than 15 orders you know so our 
a customer, who they are. And for that, we're going to create a virtual table that then we're do, going to do a calculation on. So just so you see how it works. So we go summarized, and then we're going to summarize our orders table. And then we're going to have a customer ID from orders. So we want to have the table customer ID, and then we want to have um, unique no count orders for each customer and that is just going to do a count orders count orders is count orders id so you should be uh let's do like that distinct count orders order id so if for some reason they show up more than once, just count them once. So what this is going to do is going to give us a table that has customer ID and it counts the number of orders for each customer ID. Okay. So just so you see it, you don't need to do this step, but I'm, I'm doing it in two steps. So you can see what's actually going on. So summarize whatever it returns a table and it doesn't return a variable, a number. So we are going to now use these to calculate how many customers have more than 15 orders. Okay. So a customers, for example. So we go variable. We are going to declare a variable and let's create this virtual table, a customers which is basically what we just wrote so if you remember that returns a table and now we go return and then we go um, calculate the count let's see um, calculate the count rows of orders where where the count orders you know this one the one that we just calculated just a second so a customers and then you want to put count orders and you say at least you can't reference it you see it doesn't let us so you cannot reference a column from a virtual table that is a store in a variable <laughs> did that make sense but again you cannot reference these so you have a virtual table you cannot call a customers and then count orders it just won't work so how do you do because what you would like to have here is count orders bigger than 15. what you can do is change this a little bit and filter it already in the variable so you can have filter and then you can have count orders is bigger than 15. and then here you just count rows for your a customers and you don't need to calculate anymore get out get away so Oh my god, where did it go here? So, so as you can see, it is still possible, but you have to do it in a different way because you cannot reference a column that comes from a virtual table that is stored in a variable. Okay, I hope that it made sense. I really hope so. Um, but you can store tables in variables in case you didn't know, it is 100% possible. Okay, so I hope that this video made a little bit clearer how to use variables, um, why they are useful, things that you can do, things that you cannot do. And again, if you have any comments about my performance question in the beginning, just let me know in the comment box. Otherwise, I will see you again on Monday. 
So until then, take care and have a great weekend. Bye.